All right. Um, in this last video, I'm going to uh, tie up a few odds and ends, but also kind of show you how to export um, your final output. So very simply, uh, usually at this stage, I lock you know your drawings or your sort of uh, content layer so you don't actually drag anything by accident. But uh, sometimes you might want to add captions here or there, right? So it's you know very simply like I'll just sort of drag alt drag to copy one of these, and you know you can decide what size your text wants to be. But let's say this is uh, diagram. You know, um, reasonably, let's say fourteen points, right? And just sort of size it you know, accordingly, right? And then you can just sort of place it in the corners. Um, you can decide which direction uh, these guys. If you're always going to kind of justify it to the right, then force justify it to the right. Right, and then just uh, what I usually do is just alt drag and just sort of copy, and just sort of place them in locations that graphically sort of make sense. Um, so section, uh, right. So you can actually just uh, very quickly and easily add you know tags and things like that here um, the other thing is uh, that you'll be doing this a little less but if you need to um, you can always change the color of these uh, double click and you highlight them then you can go to your swatches and change the color of the text like that so that's red okay so uh, you can change the color of the text uh, here so I'll make that one red make this one blue Etc. Etc. Right. Um, this works very similar uh, to you know Photoshop or something like that. Right. And uh, let's say the body text here. I don't want it to be full black. I can just sort of highlight it all. And uh, since this is originally black, in the sort of tint percentage, if I bump the tint percentage down to like sixty percent, then it will basically be a sort of grayed out uh, version of it. Okay, so this is sort of the basic uh, changing color of text. Uh, you can add swatches the same way you do in um, in, in Illustrator, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I guess the last sort of thing that you might need to do sometimes, depending on what you're trying to work out, but these are there's some very very basic vector graphics uh, sort of uh, tools. I'm going to go to this side, the blank side. Uh, this is the rectangle tool. They can basically make sort of graphical rectangles, and these operate more or less the same way they do in um, uh, Illustrator, except you, and you can sort of give it different stroke sizes, uh, whether it's solid, different colors as well, right? And so if I uh, change my view to uh, preview, right, these two are hidden because these don't actually have a stroke width. Right. But you know, if I add it or I make it really thick, then you see. Okay, that's these are ma mainly uh, if you needed to make graphical layouts, or you actually can turn these um, into uh, text boxes as well. So I can add text into it. And sort of still have this sort of boundary, right? So it functions both as you know a text box and a, a graphical sort of element. Uh, the other one is basically this the line. So you can sort of draw lines holding down the shift key when you draw lines. And it's sometimes good for drawing these sort of dividers or spacers, right? Uh, allows you to kind of draw vertical or horizontal lines and. Um, Sure, uh, make sure that you have, give it a stroke so, so you can see it. Uh, but these are elements that you can move around as well. Okay, so these, you know, sometimes maybe you might find a situation where you need to kind of place a sort of divider or something in here. Uh, I usually try not to unless I, you know, it's, there's a, a larger gap in between things. Uh, but, you know, this is just something that you, uh, that's available uh, to you.
Okay, so uh, these are some things that you can work with. There's a lot more fancier stuff, uh, gradients and things like that, but these are basically duplicate a lot of the functionalities of Illustrator. They're just sort of uh, basic things that are there um, to kind of help with very, very simple uh, adjustments. And I think, actually think this might want to go to the right. Uh, just to find it to the right. It looks a little better that way, so you kind of have a nice uh, edge. Okay, uh, let's say you're happy with this now, and I'm going to save it. So, uh, to export it, let's go to File, Export, and uh, I'll just export it in that sort of layout folder that we had. And then, by default, it'll export as a PDF, and it has a sort of interactive with print. You know, just leave it as print. Save. And um, there's a lot of settings you can set, but usually you know, this is all pages, or you can exp export just one or another page, things like that. These usually I just don't change. Export. And it'll run a little bit. Okay. So if I go to my poster layout folder now, um, I have an Acrobat PDF file. I open it. Voila, that's your PDF in two parts. And these are just the things I drew earlier. All right, so two layouts. I'll uh, view them to page views. And no cover page. So side by side, that's what that would look like. So this is a PDF file. Um, and that will be what you submit for your project too. Uh, let's look at the size of this. This is 3,000. Okay. All right. Now, uh, one thing in particular for you guys, though, uh, that you'll want to kind of pay attention to, and um, I kind of mentioned that before, especially if you're eventually kind of doing this for print, that, you know, this is the image resolution is something you want to pay attention to, especially for larger images like that. Uh, you might not see it in this uh, sort of uh, screen display because screen display, you know, remember what we talked about, you know, 70, 72 DPI is what usually is you know, good for web or computer viewing, so you might not notice anything here. But when you actually print out you know, some of these larger images that I stretch maybe too much beyond its sort of uh, optimal image resolution, will probably look uh, really pixelated, and probably this one as well. Right? This was actually a much smaller image. So pay attention to that. You have to print it out to actually get a better sense of um, how things will look uh, when you actually plot it. And while we're on the subject of that, uh, the other thing to kind of just to point out is that the sort of screen display um, in InDesign is uh, and it's especially noticeable in vector graphics is that this is a preview. It's not really what you're going to see or what you're going to get, right? So there's a setting here um, in the display performance, right? And it's usually set to this typical. Uh, if you set it to fast, then all of your images are blocked out, right? This is just to kind of help you understand where and how things are composed. Uh, but it's just to kind of make navigating the scene faster. So they don't actually show you uh, your images at the real quality. Uh, so it's usually this, and that's why these, this sort of looks really pixelated. But as you saw, uh, when I exported it, it actually came in um, in a nice uh, vector graphics quality with like the nice thin lines, right? Now, uh, if you want to see it in its real uh, resolution or quality, then you just go to uh, View, Display Performance, High Quality Display, and it will sort of uh, sort of go back to what it should be. Uh, but moving and dragging will become, you know, generally will become a little slower as your sort of screen basically updates, especially zooming and panning in and out. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, that's sort of just important um, to know. Okay, so the last thing I want to cover here is really actually how to 
optimize your PDFs. Now, uh, this layout that we did earlier uh, as a PDF isn't too bad, it's only three megabytes, right? So uh, it's okay. But when you start getting a lot of you know high quality images onto you know a a uh, sort of layout, it can actually add up. And so, if you remember, maybe this example um, from earlier, um, this this layout actually in its uh, sort of original state is somewhere around twenty megabytes. And I think this is actually already uh, maybe compressed a little bit. So sometimes you might find that you know after you export from InDesign that your PDF is something ridiculous like you know 200 megabytes large right and obviously uh, a lot of you know competition submissions or firms uh, that asks that ask you for work samples or uh, portfolios they have a very strict limit on the sort of file attachment sizes which is usually you know maybe five megabytes ten megabytes something really small like that. And so you'll have to find a way to actually bring down the size uh, of these elements. So to kind of show you how to do that, if uh, so, this this uh, this PDF that I'm looking at right now is roughly 20 meg megabytes, which is you know manageable. But if we can make it smaller, uh, you'll lose quality. So I usually don't overwrite this stuff. Um, I will save it as something else. Uh, keep that in mind. So if you go to, if you have Acrobat, then you can go to File, Save As. So there's two options. You can do Reduce Size or Optimized. And I usually try Reduce Size first. This is the sort of default dumb, uh, dummy proof setting. Uh, optimized gives you more things to mess around with, basically. So Reduce Size, and you'll get the, this. Say OK. And uh, yeah, let's put it there. But I basically, you know, instead of overriding, I'll just add a prefix and say, you know, R uh, underscore R, just so I know that's the smaller one or supposed to be the smaller one. So you'll see it processes images for a little while. Uh, sometimes it might give you a warning like this, blah, 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 it's okay. And let's look at what we got. Okay, so the reduce size one, you'll see here, brings it down from 19 to 12. Okay, I'm gonna close this and I'll open this. And you can sort of try it and maybe compare uh, it on your own, but okay, so that's mm, enough, but not really. Uh, let's say if it's still not enough, then I would come here, save as, and go to optimize PDF. And when you use the optimize PDF option um, then you'll get a lot of other stuff and basically here uh, the ones you want to pay attention to is the sort of downsampling right so this basically you know you can change the quality so this is to changing your JPEG compression quality to medium instead of high um, for images that are higher than let's say you know if you know this this is just for a web display it'll never be printed then you can actually say images that are higher than a certain PPI, you can change this to 72, for example, and get it a lot smaller. Um, but the other thing I usually do is I just go through these and say clean up, you know, all of these are, uh, make sure a lot of these are checked. Uh, they aren't actually, a lot of these aren't actually checked by default, especially document information, metadata, these things, uh, discard, uh, fonts, uh, do you want to unembed fonts, things like that. Um, but usually it just I think the, the bottom three if you check the bottom three and everything in here uh, because you really don't need form fields and this is for like other fancy Adobe PDF stuff right um, if that's okay say okay and uh, this one we're going to make underscore s for example save it it'll go through the same process And so you can tell it's trying harder <laughs> to compress and you know basically remove any sort of unneeded information or metadata. Get the same error image. So look at look at that. And okay, this one actually pushed it down to uh, seven. Okay, 
So, you know, that's a sort of quick and dirty on it. Uh, you can, if you really need to get it below a certain uh, amount, like start to mess with these. Uh, color images usually are can handle being downsized or downsampled a little bit better than grayscale or monochrome images, but you can sort of uh, mess with these settings to get a better sort of compression. All right, that's it. Um, so try to keep your PDF images, uh, image size with your sort of PDFs, uh, uh, ma manageable size. I would say within uh, somewhere in the 20 megabyte range is probably what you would want to target. Okay, and uh, that's it for now.